Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I've been pretty sick over the last couple days, but I have some really big stories to cover, so I thought I'd do a talking head video. Either way, today, passwords aren't safe. A couple great GPU deals, goodbye new Titan, Intel's A770 crushes the RTX 4090 at this, and AMD's RX 7000 is a huge trick that looks to be confirmed. But first, with all these new releases coming out, make sure you stay up to date by joining Meld Alerts. It's completely free, and basically, when major PC hardware is released, I'll send you a notification. Plus, I'll tell you when you can get great deals, you can actually get it at a great price. I may even send some build suggestions from time to time. With that said, let me know what releases you're most excited about by dropping a comment below. And don't worry, I'm not going to flood your inbox. Some weeks you won't get anything, and others you might get a few. To sign up, just just visit meldalerts.com and fill out the form. It's just your email. Once again, that's meldalerts.com. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, with a new generation of GPUs out, there are tons of different kind of benchmarks that we can do to see just how good these cards are. And there's one that's really interesting. As you can see right here, one user tested Hashcat, which is actually a tool for cracking passwords. And let's just say the 4090 did really well. As you can see right here, it gets an insane over two times uplift over the RTX 3090. And that's in nearly every algorithm. Now, the reason that's such a big deal is because when we go over here to Tom's hardware, we can see that the researchers actually estimated that a purpose-built password hashing rig, which involves eight RTX 4090 GPUs, could actually crack an eight-character password in less than an hour specifically 48 minutes. For those who don't know, eight character passwords are the most common among leaked passwords. We're talking a whopping 32% share of them. As Tom's Hardware mentions, this doesn't mean that they're the least safe, it just means that it's the most common password character link, or at least that's likely the reason. Now, don't worry, your passwords aren't gonna all of a sudden get cracked in the next week or so. This is specifically for offline use, or at least that's the best way where it's going to be used. Most sites only give you a certain amount of tries and then you have to wait like 24 hours, 15 minutes or like intervals that'll go up from 15 minutes and it'll be like an hour. And they have these things for a reason and it's specifically to prevent stuff like this. So you really shouldn't be too, too concerned about this, but it is pretty wild. If you follow quantum computing, you know that there's been a lot of people that have discussed the fact that if quantum computers actually become more mainstream, things like that, once we figure out some of the issues that we're dealing with them, encryption could be a thing of the past because quantum computers can effectively break the best encryption that we have right now in like seconds or minutes, or let's just say not long at all. And that's a major issue. Well, unfortunately, with things like the 4090, as fast as it is, it looks like we may get that even before quantum computing. Let's just say that's not good. And next up for today, prices have been going down by quite a bit, but things are getting really, really good. Case in point, we have this 6900 XT by XFX. It's currently selling for $669.99. Remember that when this card originally came out, it had an MSRP of a grand. And once it was actually selling, it was something like $2,000, $1,500, way up there at the time. Well, prices have clearly plummeted far below that. And right now, the 6900 XT is actually looking like a really good deal. And believe it or not, XFX isn't the only one selling their 6900. XT for this. When we move over to ASRock, we can see that their 6900 XT is currently $669.99 on Newegg as well. And what's really wild about this pricing is that even when we look at, say, the upcoming RTX 4080, it still looks worth it. Remember that that GPU starts at around $1,200. So at $669.99, the 6900 XT is definitely looking like a good deal. And of course, if you're interested in either of these, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. It won't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. And next up for today, if you remember a little while back, copite 7 Kimmy, who has absolutely been a very trustworthy leaker in the past, discussed an upcoming Ada Lovelace GPU that 
he more or less said would probably be something like an RTX Titan. That GPU was set to use the entire 8102 GPU, which the RTX 4090, while it is made from it, does not use the whole thing. Not only that, but it was set to use something like 48 gigabytes of GDDR6X. So, a pretty big monster of a GPU. Well, Unfortunately, it looks like, at least according to Copite 7 Kimmy, we won't be seeing a Titan of Ada Lovelace. Now, from what some of you mentioned in a previous video where I was talking about something from Moore's Law is Dead, many of you mentioned that he had actually stated that it was the Titan that was effectively melting PSUs. And of course, with 48 gigs of GDDR6X, all the wild stuff that that was going to come with, it's not too surprising. Unfortunately, a lot of articles were actually stating that it was the 4090 Ti that he was talking about. I haven't gone back to double check, but it's really looking like we're talking the Titan here. Either way, that leaves room for the RTX 4090. And as you can see right here, they say, does that also mean no 4090 Ti? To which Copite 7 Kimmy states the 4090 Ti is still possible in the future. Basically, while a Ada Lovelace RTX Titan is almost certainly not coming, a 4090 Ti is still on the table. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story that originally came from Capframe X and was later posted by Tom's Hardware. And basically, what Catframe X did was test the RTX 3090 6800 XT, Intel's new A770, and the RTX 4090 in AV1 decoding. And let's just say it's really interesting. First up, as you can see here, they used 4K decoding. I do believe, yes, they used Japan and 8K 60fps for the uh, 4K and 8K resolutions. It was done in the Chrome browser. So keep in mind, since we're talking decoding, we're basically talking watching a video. And of course, at 4K, things are more or less what you would expect. The A770 does very well, 3090 does very well. One thing to note is that, at least according to this, the 6800 XT, while it maintains a decent average FPS of 55.8, it dips drastically in the 1% and 0.2 percentile FPS. And things get really interesting when we move to 8K. As you can see right here, the A770 maintains a very good FPS rate. With the average FPS at 59.9, the 1% percentile FPS at 45.3, and then 0.2% percentile at 44. When we move down to NVIDIA's newest GPU, the RTX 4090, we can see that it still has an okay average FPS of 57.6, but then when we look at the 1%, we see 17.7. .7. So a massive dip, meaning when you're watching this, it will probably look fairly choppy at times. And then moving down to the 0.2 percentile, it gets even worse at 16.6. .6. And for some reason, when we look down at the 6800 XT, it's just really bad. The average is just 22, then the 1% is 1.3, and the 0.2% percentile is 1.2. Basically, Intel's Arc A770 even beats the newest RTX 4090 at AV1 decoding, and it also completely crushes the 6800 XT. Definitely surprising to say the least. And lastly for today, if you remember not long ago, I went over this tweet by Kyle Bennett, and he's the one that heads up hard OCP. And as you can see, he claimed from multiple sources that Navi 31 was set to support DisplayPort 2.1. Now, that was really interesting because, as some of you likely know, the 4090 only gets DisplayPort 1.4a, which can only do 4K at 120 hertz. Now, obviously a lot of you are like, well, 4K at 120 hertz, when are you ever gonna do more than that? Well, believe it or not, the RTX 4090 can. So having this limitation on the display port output is not good. Now, at the time, what was odd about this claim is that DisplayPort 2.1 had not even been announced. No one knew if this was even real. DisplayPort 2.0 was the newest specification. Well, just recently, it was officially announced by Visa. Basically, this more or less confirms this, or at least it makes it seem way more believable given he announced this before the actual specification was even a thing. So AMD's next-gen GPUs will likely not face the issue that NVIDIA's current RTX 4090 has. And that would obviously give AMD a really big advantage in certain areas. 
So while that does it for today, do you think DisplayPort 2.0 is a huge deal compared to 1.4 on the RTX 4090? Is this going to give AMD a big advantage or no? Let me know down in the comments below. And I do apologize, I was kind of all over the place. Like I said, I've been sick for the past couple days, but hopefully as the medicine gets in me, I start feeling better soon. Either way, if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.